Our grocery stores are larger with more diverse options than we've ever had before. But most of what's on those shelves shouldn't be considered food. These food products are engineered to be cheap, addictive, and convenient, while also quietly fueling a health crisis, including increasing the risk for stroke and cognitive impairment. How did things get this way? And what can we do about it? What are ultra-processed foods? According to the NOVA classification system for edible substances, there are four groups that we classify food products under. Group one is unprocessed or minimally processed foods. This includes things like fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as fresh meat. Group two is processed culinary ingredients. These are derived from group one foods, but they might be crushed, milled, or ground, and they're typically used for cooking. Examples include spices, starches, salt, sugar, vinegar, maple syrup, and other seeds or nut oils. Now groups three and four are where things start to get interesting. Group three is processed foods. And these are relatively simple foods that are made by adding group two products to group one products, like adding sugar or salt. They might be made through processes like baking, canning, fermenting, or boiling. Examples include cheese, canned vegetables, dried or canned fish, salted nuts, or fruits in syrup. So let's get this out of the way. Basic processed foods like those in group three are not the enemy. These food products are still food. And that brings us to group four, ultra processed foods or UPFs. These are food products that have been heavily altered from their original state. They're packed with additives like preservatives, artificial flavors, colors, and sweeteners. And they usually contain significantly more fats, oils, and sugars than regularly processed foods. And they use food substances of no culinary use, like high fructose corn syrup, maltodextrin, hydrogenated oils, modified starches, and thickeners. Examples include cheese puffs, highly processed breakfast pastries, mini breakfast cereals, some types of bread, soda, and frozen pizza. And kind of scary, a 2021 study reported that in the USA, UPF products were estimated to contribute to 57.9% of total energy intake, meaning that almost 60% of calories consumed by the average US citizen was made up of primarily UPFs. Why are ultra processed foods everywhere? Well, simply, it comes down to money. Ultra processed foods are cheap to produce, they're convenient, and they have long shelf lives. Not to mention that they are literally addictive and irresistible. You might not know, but food companies spend an insane amount to engineer their products to make you wanna come back for more and more and more. They have food scientists who come up with the perfect combination of textures and flavors, sweet, salty, crunchy, umami flavors, so that you can't put them down. You know those cheesy powdery coated chips you like so much? Engineered. You know how that powder gets on your fingertips and you have to lick it off? It's engineered. These things don't happen by accident. Companies make UPFs incredibly convenient, preying on our work till we drop mentality, as well as the limited time we have between work, commutes, childcare, working out, etc. Are you always on the go? Just reach for this quick and easy microwavable meal that's ready in two minutes. Not to mention that these products are aggressively marketed. I mean, when was the last time that you saw a commercial for an apple? They want you coming back for more, 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 all to line their pockets without caring about the detrimental health effects that these foods are causing. How do UPFs actually affect our health? A 2019 evidence-based report from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations found that there was a dose-response relationship between consuming ultra-processed foods and cardiovascular diseases as well as type 2 diabetes, meaning that the more UPFs someone ate, the higher chance they had of developing these diseases. There were also associations found between UPFs and breast cancer, gastrointestinal issues like irritable bowel syndrome, depression, general frailty, as well as all-cause mortality, meaning death from any cause. And a 2024 study published in the Neurology Journal by the American Academy of Neurology found that just a 10% increase in intake of ultra-processed foods increased the risk for developing cognitive impairment as well as the risk for stroke. But they also found that 
intake of minimally processed or unprocessed foods actually lowered the risk for cognitive impairment and stroke. So we understand that a high consumption of UPFs lead to not so great outcomes, but how are they actually causing these issues in our bodies? So there are some ideas around this. UPFs cause a high glycemic response, but have low satiety potential. This means that they spike our blood sugar, but we don't feel full. This causes us to overeat high calorie foods that don't really have a lot of nutritional benefit, leading to excessive weight gain. And we know that excessive weight gain can negatively impact health, especially over the long term. UPFs are usually not nutritionally dense, meaning they technically pack a lot of energy in the form of calories, but you're not really getting a lot of bang for your buck. It's like filling up a really nice car that you'd use octane fuel for with unleaded gas. You're not giving your body the right kind of fuel when you eat UPFs. They may also negatively impact your gut health by promoting an inflammatory gut environment. They reduce bacterial diversity and favor bacteria that is associated with adverse health outcomes, unlike minimally processed food, which is shown to support good gut bacteria. Okay, now take a deep breath. We're not gonna get stuck in the doom and gloom of how UPFs impact us. It's important to understand, but we can't stay there. We have to act. We're not left without options. Number one, recognize that balance is key. Simply going cold turkey and cutting every UPF out of your life is not going to be easy and it's likely not going to be sustainable. It's okay to have UPFs every now and then. For example, I love graham crackers and barbecue kettle chips. Like, it's a problem when they're near me. So I'm not going to never eat those foods again. However, are they gonna be on my grocery list every week? No. What about every month? Honestly, probably not. I will have them every now and then. And that brings us to our next point. Eating more whole foods makes it easier to cut out UPFs. While it is going to be about balance and making these changes slowly and sustainably, recognize that as you start eating more whole foods and start excluding UPFs from your diet, it's going to get easier. It's just gonna take some time for you and your body to get used to this. Because remember, UPFs by their nature are engineered to literally be addictive and irresistible. It's gonna take some time for your body and brain to unlearn that. But you know what really helps with avoiding UPFs? Not keeping them in the house. If you don't keep UPFs in the house, it's gonna be significantly easier to avoid them. Now again, it all comes back to balance. Maybe you keep some processed pastas in your house, but you don't keep your favorite processed cookies in the house that you tend to eat a whole sleeve of at night before you go to bed. And recognize that you might still be tempted to buy UPFs if you're out on your lunch break at work, or if you get hungry while you go out and about running errands but not keeping them in the house is significantly gonna help you reduce that temptation and help you follow through with your health goals. Another thing that will help is to plan ahead. We all live busy lives, but if you can take a few minutes out of your day to do some snack planning and prep or meal planning and prep, you're going to significantly reduce your temptation to reach out for convenient ultra processed foods. If you go to work, prep your lunches ahead of time. That way you can just grab and go and you know that you're eating something healthier versus going out to a fast food restaurant. And plan your dinners ahead of time. They don't have to be a big event. They can take you 15 to 30 minutes to make. And if you know what you're having, you're not gonna be tempted to stop somewhere and pick up food on the way home. And lastly, but probably the most simple, read labels. I know this one is basic and you're probably like, all right, why is she telling us this? Are you actually doing it? You wanna make sure that you are actually looking at the labels on the food that you're buying if it's not a whole food. Do you recognize all of the ingredients? If not, put it back. Does it have a lot of added sugar? Put it back if it does. Does it have a lot of added sodium or any amount of trans fats? Put it back. You wanna look for simple ingredients, ingredients that you recognize. And if it's not recognizable as a whole food, consider only buying a little of it or skipping it altogether. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about making better choices, 
for better health one day at a time because small changes will add up to big wins. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to support our channel in whatever way you can. Like this video, subscribe, click the join channel to become a channel member, or leave us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below. A huge thanks to all of our donors with a special thank you to Heather G, Ryan D, and Modus Nova in our Empower tier on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.